Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Maharaj Ananya Tirandi Padigan and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Panchakal Uttaru Vista, Kripas and Dupayata, Uditanam Pahavani by the courses mercy of Sri Guru and Goranda, <coughs> today we are observing the most auspicious festival of Sri Guru Purnima, the appearance day of Srila Vyasadeva. <laughs> 
His name is Sri Krishna Dwai Payana Veda Vyas. Why? First, see Krishna. He has a very dark, beautiful complexion. Not only that, but in Bhagavad Gita, see Krishna has said, Muninam apyaham vasaha. Muninam apyaham vyasaha. Out of all the rishis, I am vyas. So, generally, see Krishna will empower a jiva to divide the Vedas. So, generally, Vyas is a Shaktyavesh avatar, but not our Vyas. He's not like that. You see, in the day of Lord Brahma, there are a thousand cycles of ages, and they are divided into four, 14 periods of Manus. Each Manu reigns for 71 cycles of ages. Now we are in the seventh Manu, Vairasvata Manu, and 28 cycles have taken place. So until today, in this period of Manu, there have been 28 Vyasas, dividers of the Vedas. 28. The 24th one was Valmiki, then Parashara, then Shakti, then, then um, what is his name? Karna. Then our own, uh, our own uh, Vyasadev. And in the next cycle of ages, the next Vyasadev will be Ashwatthama, the son of Dronacharya. So Vyas is a post which is changing in each cycle of ages. But no, Krishna has said, Muni Nama Pyaham Vyasa in Bhagavad Gita. Among the Munis I am Vyas. So he empowers someone in each age to be Vyas. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, there, see Krishna has said, Dwaipaya knows me, Vyasanam. Out of all the Vyasas, I am Dwaipayana. So, our uh, Vyasadev is actually directly Sakshat Narayan, directly Lord Narayan. He's not a Shakchavesh avatar. In Mahabharata and other Shastras, there's a description of one uh, Muni, Pantaratama. And it is said that he uh, becomes Vyas. So this is why some people think that our Vyas is a uh, Shaktivesh avatar and empowered Jiva. But our Acharyas have said that you should consider it in this way, that the Supreme Lord expanded himself as that Rishi. And in past times as if he were a Jiva, and then he entered into the eternal Narayan form of Vyasadev when he attained his perfection. So, Vyasadev in Srimad Bhagavatam he said, Sakshat Narayan, directly Lord Narayan. So we see also in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna has said, Sarvasya cha ham vridi sani visto matahas vidri jnana maponam cha vedaishta sarva aham eva vedyo vedanta krit veda videva cha ham vedanta krit. I have written the Vedanta. So our Vyasadev is the form of Bhagavan. So that's the, the first part of his name, Sri Krishna. Because he is an incarnation of Krishna and because he has a dark complexion, his name is Sri Krishna. Now we come to the second part of his name, Dwaipayana. There was one Apsara. Her name was Adrika. And Apsaras like to come down to earth and frolic in the water in beautiful places. 
So she liked to come and frolic in the water of the Jumuna. One day, one sage came to take bath in Jumuna and he went in Jumuna and he was meditating. And this Apsara was very playful. So just for fun, she swam under the water and grabbed him by the feet and pulled him. And this disturbed his meditation. So he gave a curse to her. Oh, you were swimming under water. Become a fish. So then, she became a fish. And she was living in the Jumuna for many years. So after a long time, perhaps you know, there was a king. And uh, his name was Chantano. Mm, and uh, he had a very beautiful new bride named Girika. So she was very young and they were just married and they hadn't consummated the marriage yet. Because they should consummate the marriage at the time when the lady is fertile because there should be conception. So when it came to the day of the consummating the marriage, then, mm, sorry, it wasn't Santana Maharaj, excuse me, it, Upa, Upari Charvasu, his name was Upari Charvasu, Santana will come later, Upari Charvasu, so Upari Charvasu was married to Girika and he wanted to consummate that marriage, but when the time came, he was very, very eager, he had been looking forward to it so much, but then the Petris, the ancestors from Pitrilok, they appeared to him and they said, you should go to the forest and hunt and kill a deer and offer it to us and make a Sraddha ceremony. Sraddha ceremony. So then just as Uparichar Basu, the magical day came that he'd been waiting for, but now he had to leave his wife behind and go hunting in the forest. So his wife was very disappointed. So when he was in the forest, the, the, it was spring season and all the Udipana of the mm, amorous mood, all the things that inspire romantic mood were there in the forest. And Upari Charabasu, uh, he was thinking of his wife very, with so much lust. And so when he was resting, then he had a nocturnal emission. That means he's, he passed uh, his seed. And then he said, oh no, this is terrible. I was supposed to conceive with this seed and now it's being spilled. So he took a leaf from, he was underneath an Ashok tree, he took a leaf from that and he wrapped up his seed in the leaf. And one eagle was in that Ashok tree and he called that eagle. He said, please, deliver this to my wife. <laughs> so he gave the parcel to the eagle. <laughs> so you may all be thinking that this is very extraordinary <laughs> pastime and no doubt you're all very entertained. <laughs> but it shows in Vedic culture there is just a basic, very simple basic understanding of life that all things have a purpose. Hmm? So sex is for procreation. Hmm? And this is the evil of the Kali Yuga that all things become separated from their purpose. Like a, the purpose of something is called Artha. It's purpose. So a human being has Purushartha. There are four purposes. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. But really these are related to the body. So the, the supreme purpose of life, which is really related to the soul, is Panchama Purushartha, Krishna Prem. So when something is utilized according to its purpose, then this is perfect. And any transgression of the purpose of an object is evil. That is the, um, the uh, very, very much inauspicious and impious. So when a human being doesn't follow Dharma, Artha, Karma, Moksha, or from the Vyavaharic, from the worldly perspective, then it's very impious. But from the transcendental perspective, the purpose for which we are born is one thing. 
What is that? To attain Krishna Prem. So it is very, very inauspicious when object is separated from its purpose. So don't be separated from your purpose. Why have you been born? Why do you exist? Why? Krishna Prem! Krishna Prem! Yes! Not for anything else. So anyway, the king Upachari Vasu, according to the Vyabharic, the worldly standards, he was thinking, the purpose of my seed is for the procreation. And so this is very wrong. So he wrapped it in the Ashok leaf and then he gave it to the eagle and the eagle set off to deliver it to his queen. But on the way there was another eagle and he thought he must have something, some very delicious food there. So if one eagle has some food, usually the other eagles will attack it and fight with him to get it. So then this other eagle attacked him and the two eagles they were fighting in the sky. And in the struggle, then the first eagle, he dropped the parcel. And the parcel came open. And it fell into the water. And then that fish, who was before the Apsara Atrika, she was swimming and pulled and swallowed. So then, about nine months later, there was a fisherman and he caught that fish and when he got the fish home he was preparing and cut open the fish and there were two human babies inside. One boy and one girl. So then the fisherman was <laughs> What do I do? What do I do? So then he went to the king, Upachari Vasu, Uparichara Vasu. And he said, look, I found this fish and I cut open and there were two human children inside. So, so then Uparichara Vasu, he adopted the boy. And the boy later became a very famous king named Matsya Maharaj. Yes, you may have heard in, of the famous place Matsya Desh. So Matsya Maharaj, that boy grew up and became the great king Matsya Maharaj. And the girl, uh, the, that fisherman gave to the king of his uh, tribe, the, the Dasa tribe. So the king's name is Dasaraj, king of the Das. So now Dasaraj adopted this daughter. And she was very, very beautiful. And very, very pious. And had wonderful qualities. So he gave her the name Satyavati. Satyavati. The embodiment of veracity, truthfulness. But she also had the fragrance, let us say, or the odor of a fish. So she was also known as Matsyaganda because she emanated a very strong fishy odor. So Matsyaganda or Satyavati, she grew to be a very beautiful young woman with one drawback. And she used to assist her father by um, rowing the boat and taking passengers across the Jamuna. So one day, the great sage, Parasara Muni, his ashram is on the other side of the Jamuna from Matra. So he wanted to cross to go to his ashram. There is the ashram of Atri Rishi, Parasara Rishi, Durvasa Rishi. Many great sages live in the forest of Lohavan on the other side of the Jamuna from Mitra. So, Parasara Rishi got into the boat with Satyavati. And as they were crossing the river, then Parasara Rishi was transcendently inspired that he wanted to conceive a child with her. So when he expressed his desire, then she was somewhat reluctant for a number of reasons. She said that I am unmarried. So then if I'll have a child out of wedlock, then later when I want to get married, it will be impossible. It will, it, it will be completely impossible. It will be a matter of great embarrassment for me. So Parasa Rishi said, I am a powerful Rishi. I will bless you with Virgo Intakta. 
<laughs> that afterwards your virginity will be intact. <laughs> and then she said, oh, but we are in a boat crossing the river and if someone from the side will see, it will be very scandalous. So then, Parasa Rishi, by his mystic power, created a fog and there was a fog all over. Have you seen when there's fog on the Jamuna, you can't see anything. So a very thick fog came everywhere all over the Jamuna, so that no one on the banks would be able to see anything. Yeah. And she said, also, this is not pleasant for you, because I smell like a fish. So then Parasa Rishi gave a blessing to her. You should not smell like a fish, you should smell like a story. So then her fragrance was transformed and she was fragrant like Kasturi musk. Very beautiful and attractive fragrance. And this fragrance spread for eight miles in all directions. So after that she was not called Matsya Ganda, but she was known as Kasturi Ganda or Yojana Ganda. Yojana means the distance of eight miles. So then Mm. They, uh, in the middle of Jamuna, you may have noticed that the level, is, the level of the water is going up and down, so sometimes islands appear there. So especially just there, in between Mathura and Lohar Valley in the Jamuna every year, you'll see an island. When we go on Brajmandal Parakrama, and we go up to the top of the Kansatila, the, 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 the fort of Kamsa Maharaj, then from there you can look and you can see the island. So they came to that island and there she conceived a child. So this was not done in a gross way, but in a very mystical way, because immediately she came, gave birth there and then, immediately. And there and then the child also grew up. And that child was Sylvia so then Parasara Muni, he took that, his son Vyas to his ashram in Lohavai. And he studied from his father then. So we're discussing the name of Vyasadev. Sri Krishna Dwai Payana. His name is Dwai Payana because he was born on a dweep, an island in the Jamuna. So, Sri Krishna Dwaipayana, now Veda Vyas. <clears throat> In ancient times, there was a Rishi. His name was Gautam Rishi. And he was doing very hard austerities. After some time, Lord Brahma was very pleased with him and came to him and gave him some seeds and these seeds would grow again and produce seeds and grow again they were et et eternal so even without water they would grow by themselves so he took those seeds and he went to his ashram and he stayed there with his disciples and he planted the seeds and food was growing. After some time, a famine came. So there were no seeds anywhere, there was no uh, food growing. The only place in the world where food was available was in the ashram of Gautam Rishi because he had these uh, mystical seeds that were given by Lord Brahma. So at that time, a group of Rishis came to the ashram of Gautam Rishi and said, please, the famine is going on, allow us to stay with you. Gautam Rishi was, I am blessed to have the association of the Rishis, be my guests. Because a guest is supposed to be served like the Supreme Lord, Atiti Narayan. So then, they were staying with him and they remained with Gautam Rishi for the duration of the famine. When the famine was over, it began to rain again, food was growing again. So then they asked permission. Oh, Gautam Rishi, uh, please give us permission to leave. Gautam Rishi, understanding the um, etiquettes of hospitality, said, oh, just stay for a few more days. This is the etiquette, you know. If, you, if you're feeding someone and they're finished, then you come and say, they say, no, no. He said, no, just have a bit more. <laughs> this is hospitality. Just a little bit more. 
Oh, this is very light. <laughs> so, oh, just stay a little bit longer. Like, so every time you ask to leave, go to Mr. Please, go my guest, just stay a little bit longer. <laughs> so they stayed and they were all discussing with each other. We never want to get out of here. We should make a plan to get out. So they made a plan. By their mystic powers, they manifested a mystical cow. So one day, Gautam Rishi came to his ashram and he saw that his cow was there. And he folded his hands and gave pranam. Oh, Gomata. And he, he began to worship the cow and took water and sprinkled the water on the cow. And when he sprinkled the water on the cow, it died. So then the cow died and all the rishis came in and said, What? You have killed the cow. We can't stay here any longer. We could never stay in a place with a person who has killed a cow. Huh? So then Gautam Rishi was very apologetic. He said, how, how can I atone for this killing of a cow? The Rishi said, the only way you can atone and uh, bring this cow back to life is by sprinkling water of the Ganga. Water of the Ganges. So the problem was that this is before the time of Bhagirath Maharaj. So the, the Ganges was in heaven, but there was no Ganges on earth. There was no Ganges on earth. So how will he get the Ganga? So then Gautam Rishi, he began to do puja to Lord Shiva. So he was worshipping Lord Shiva and when Lord Shiva was Satisfied, he, he appeared to him and said, I'll give you a benediction, what do you want? Gautam Rishi said, give me one of your jatta, one of your matted locks. <laughs> so then Lord Shiva and gave him one jatta, one matted lock. Why? Because the Ganges is, is kept on the head of Lord Shiva. So there were some drops of the Ganges water in this lock and he took the lock and he sprinkled it onto the cow. And when he sprinkled the Ganga water there, then that cow just disappeared. So then he was meditating and in his meditation he realized this was not a real cow. This was a trick of those sages who were trying to run away. So then he gave them a curse and he, he cursed them, oh, you rishis, you'll lose your power of memory and then you won't be able to remember the Vedic mantras, you won't be able to perform the sacrifices. And so we see that in the cycles of ages, the sages, they know the mantras of the Vedas in Sati Yuga. They know the mantras of the Vedas in Treta Yuga, but in Dwarpa Yuga, by the end, as it gets towards the end of Dwarpa Yuga, they start to forget. It's a very big problem. So then, when the rishis were forgetting the mantras, then Lord Brahma and Shiva and the demigods, they were very concerned. Especially the demigods, they want to have their offerings in the mantras, so they're all concerned. And they prayed to Lord Narayan, Oh Lord Narayan, please do something. And he said, Don't worry, I myself will appear in this world as a Rishi and I will preserve all the Vedic mantras by compiling them, dividing them and having them all written down by Ganesh. So, at the end of the Dwarpa Yuga, the Supreme Lord appeared in this world as Srila Vyasadeva because it was absolutely necessary that all the Vedic mantras which the Rishis were starting to forget should be preserved. So in the beginning there was only one Veda and Srila uh, Krishna Dvaipaya he divided the one Veda into four sections Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atarava Veda. So, <clears throat> if there's a circle, a line that touches both sides of the circle, passing through the middle, 
what we call in English the diameter. But in Sanskrit, the diameter is called Vyas. So that which divides the circle is called Vyas. So because he has divided the Vedas, so therefore his name is, we're explaining his names one by one, Krishna, Dvaipayana, Veda, Vyas. The diameter touches both sides of the circle and also the middle. So the center of all existence is Sri Krishna. And this hmm, existence has the eternal spiritual world and the temporary material world. The material energy is eternal, but it's manifest and unmanifest again and again, whereas the spiritual world is manifest eternally. So, that person who touches both worlds, who sees this material world, and also in his trance sees the spiritual world, he is, and he is absorbed in the center point, that means the center of all existence, see Krishna. He is, therefore, metaphorically speaking, he is like a diameter, his name is Vyas. So, seeing Krishna, Dvaipayana, Veda, Vyas. Now, traditionally, on the appearance day of Vyas, the disciples, they worship their Guru and all their Guru Parampara and all the Acharyas of the various Sampradayas and all the great personalities who are responsible for manifesting transcendental knowledge in this world such as Shukadev Goswami, Vyasadeva and his main disciples so all those personalities we have just worshipped in this Vyasa Puja ceremony yeah. just earlier the seat of Vyasadeva is called Vyasasana the seat of Vyas so the pure Vaishnavas, they may sit upon the seat of Vyas. Why? Because they represent the realization of Vyas. Shabda Brahmani Nishnato Na Nishnayet Preyadi Sramotasya Sramopalo Hyadeno Eva Rakshataha. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Shakta Brahmani Nishnato. A person may be very learned in Shakta Brahma, that means the scriptures. He may have memorized all of the scriptures. But Nanishnayat Parayadi. If the person is not mm, Nishnat, mm, that means bathed in, absorbed in. Immersed, Nishnat is immersed in what? Pare, realization of the Supreme Truth. Then all of his knowledge of the Vedas, theoretical knowledge, is useless. Shramastasya, it was just hard work. His study of the Vedas was hard work, Sramafalo, and the only fruit of his hard work is the hard work that he did. But there's no real benefit for that person. Hyadenam Eva Rakshataha. It is exactly like if you have a cow who is barren, produces no calf and produces no milk. Then you are serving, 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 but no result. <laughs> so, in the same way, one who is studying the Shastra, but he, he may be very learned, but he doesn't have a realization of the Shastra. All of his hard work was useless. It was like serving a barren cow, no result. So, it is essential that just as Srila Vyasadeva has realized the pastimes of Sri Krishna and manifested Srimad Bhagavatam, that those who will sit on the Vyasasana, the seat of Vyas, they should represent Vyasadeva hmm? by repeating his words with realization. Tasmin Mahan Mukarita Madhubich Charitre 
פיוש שיש שהייתה פריטה שרבנתי אתה יהיה פיבנתנו הרפרישון ופגעה וכהנאיס תנס פרישנת סנטריק בישור כמוה מדו ביץ צ'ריטרה means the past times of the מדו ביץ שקרישנה מוכריתה that they are, those pastimes are transformed and become in the form of words. Tasmin Mahan Mukarita Madhubit Charitra. And then those pastimes in the form of transcendental sound emanate from the lips of Mahat, a great devotee. And they're flowing continuously in all directions like rivers. So the example of rivers is given here because you know why rivers are flowing? Because the Himalayas are very high and there's snow on the top of the Himalayas. And then when the snow melts, then it runs down and it's flowing like this. So in the same way, it's understood that the pure devotee's heart is very high, very elevated, experiencing the spiritual world. And when the disciple is very humbly, with great faithfulness and with great loyalty, dedicating himself to the service of that pure Vaishnava, then that Vaishnava's heart melts. So then when it melts, then it, the nectar of the heart of that Vaishnava, which is very hot, starts to run down and it comes out like a river from his mouth. In the form of so, if the disciple will listen to that flow of Harikata with ears which are avitrasha, hmm? with <coughs> intense thirst, with a never ending thirst, oh, Gurudev, I want to hear more and more and more. Hmm? He never becomes tired of hearing. <laughs> so then that person who is hearing with that intense, intensely, unquenchably thirsty ears. For that person, then Tanas Prashant, Asanatrit Vayashoka Moha, he will never be touched by hunger, by thirst, by fear, by illusion or lamentation. How can you never be touched by these things? That means that simply by hearing, the entire bodily conception is washed away and the soul becomes Mukta Mahapurush, liberated by the hearing process. So the seat of Vyas is called Vyasa San, who is sitting on the seat of Vyas, should be qualified like Vyas so that the Harikata will flow and those who will hear, they will become pure devotees, develop Krishna brain. So, because Sri Guru is the representative of Vyasadeva, on the appearance day of Vyasadeva, all disciples are worshipping their Guru. So it's also called Guru Purnima, Purnima, the full moon day on which our Guru Dev is worshipped. Now, let's come to the life of Vyasadeva. One day, Srila Vyasadeva, he rose early in the morning and he took bath in the Sarasvati River. Very high in the Himalayas. Has anyone been there to Badrik Ashram? Yes. The cave of Vyasadeva is there. So just above, if you go past Badrik a little further up, and then you will come to the Shamya Prash Ashram. A very beautiful place where the three gunas are in equilibrium. So it's called Samya Prash. The place where three gunas are in equilibrium. Yesterday was there. He took bath in the Sarasvati. And then he sat in meditation. He was pondering. I have, on the order of my Gurudev, Narad Rishi, 
divided the one Veda into four. I have presented the Upanishads and the essence of the Upanishads I have given in Vedanta Sutra. But this subject matter is extremely difficult for common people to understand. So I have given 18 Puranas, 18 main Maha Puranas, and altogether 59 Puranas, but 18 main ones, to make the message of the Vedas understandable for the general people. But still people, were many persons were unqualified. So for them, I manifested the Mahabharat. 100,000 verses full of politics and intrigue and affairs and all kinds of things that people are interested in. There's a lot of Gramya Kata actually. It's a mundane talk there in Mahabharat. But attracting all the people by the mundane talk, I have attracted them and within that I have given Bhagavad Gita to benefit all the people. But even though I have done all of these things, I am not feeling satisfied. Why am I not feeling satisfied? So then, Vyasadev, just as he was considering, why am I not feeling satisfied? There was a sound in the sky. flying in the sky, playing his veena, singing the names of Radha Raman, Sri Narad Muni arrived there, and Srila Vyasadev gave Dandavat Pranam. Then he offered an asana, a seat, and did puja to his Gurudev, offered him some water to drink, and then he sat with folded hands in front of his Gurudev, awaiting instruction. Narad Rishi smiled. He said, Can a person be satisfied by considering the physical, material body and mind to be the goal of life? Very deep question. Narad Vyasadev said to his Gurudev, Tvam pariyatam arka iva trilogim antastaro vayo ivatma shakshi paravare brahmani dharmato bratai snatasame nyunam alam bichakshwa. O Gurudev, Tvam pariyatam arka iva trilogim. Just like, you are just like the sun. You can travel all over the universe and see everything outwardly, just like the sun. And tastaro vayor ivatma shakshi. And you can also see everything internally, like prana vayu, the prana which is moving inside everyone. In fact, Atma Shakshi, you are non different from Atma Shakshi, Paramatma. Jeeve Shaksha Nahitati Guru Chaita Rupe, Shikshi Guru Hoy Krishna Mahanta Rupe. The conditioned soul cannot perceive the Paramatma. 
So Paramatma has come outside to speak to us in the form of Gurudev. So he glorified Narad Rishi in this way. Then he said, Paravare Brahmani Dharmato Bratai. I was absorbed in doing so many bratas. <laughs> and, ex and writing about Brahman. But Natashame Nunam Alambichakshwa. I have some nyun. Nyun means lacking. There's something lacking in me. I'm feeling deficient. I'm feeling dissatisfied. Allah hmm? Bichaksha. Will you kindly describe to me what is the cause of my dissatisfaction? So then, Narad Rishi, he said, Bhavata Nudita Prayam Yasho Bhagavato Malam Ye Neva So Natusyeta Mange Tad Darshanam Kilam very wonderful. He said, Bhavata Nudita Prayam, you have hardly described the beautiful pastimes of Krishna. You have described all about Karma Kanda in the Vedas, Jnana Kanda in the Vedas. You have described about Brahman, Nivishesh Brahman, hmm? and described Mukti liberation. You have described Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, religious, the practice of Dharma, religious principles. Artha, how to attain the uh, economic prosperity. Kama, how to fulfill your desires. And Moksha, how to be liberated from this world. Something you have given, told about Bhakti, something, a little bit, in Bhagavad Gita, in other places. But you have not elaborately described the beautiful sweet pastimes of Sri Krishna in Vrindavan. Therefore, you have not satisfied Krishna. And because you have not satisfied Krishna, therefore, Mane Tad Darshanam Kilam. Narayana said, I consider that your darshan. Your vision or your philosophy, Vedanta, Vedanta Sutra, is killer, insufficient. Hmm? But my darshan, what is that? Pancharatra. Vyasadeva has compiled Vedanta Sutra. But Narada has compiled Narada Pancharatra. He has revealed the Narada Pancharatra. It is only about bhakti. The actual practical process of how to worship the Supreme Lord and uh, uh, through mantras, mm, the process of archan and so on. Directly the worship of the Supreme Lord. Whereas Vyasadeva had gone the philosophical route. Yeah? If you read Bhagavad Gita at the end, you still don't know how to offer arti. Right? Right? Many people read that but they don't know, okay, which one, what do I offer first? The incense or the, or, or, or the handkerchief or what? But, and how many times? And, oh, right? So you see, so Vyasadeva had given many philosophical things, but practically, how do you please and serve the Supreme Lord? <laughs> Krishna himself has a promise to Narad. I will reveal myself to anyone who worships me by Sada Upachar, offering the 16 articles. So if someone will worship Krishna, offering the 16 articles according to the principles of Archana in the Narada Pancharatra, Krishna will manifest his beauty to that person. He is promised. And that's why it is necessary to receive Diksha from a bona fide Guru and then learn how to do Archa and gradually, gradually, and along with the chanting Harinam, actually Harinam reveals everything. But because the mind of the living entities is very unsteady and they make many offenses to the Holy Name, so it's necessary for them to become 
uh, regulated in their life. So the worship of the deity regulates your life. You have to wake up at a particular time, take bath, put on tea light, go to the deity's room, chant certain mantras. So the process of Archan regulates the life to remove the two main problems which are stopping the living entity realizing the power of the holy name. That is Kadariya Shil, Kadariya Shil, impious behavior and Vikshipta Chitta, restless mind. So, Narad Muni told to Vyasadev, Mangye Tantarshanam Kilam. I consider your philosophy to be, it's lacking. Hmm? Now later Narad Rishi will explain about his path and this practice of bhakti. But first, he's criticizing Vyasa. Because this is the prerogative of Guru. He's Nindadi Shumna. He has no desire to criticize anyone. But out of mercy, he may tell the disciple, you have a fault. <laughs> Even if the disciple doesn't have a fault, he can tell it. You have this fault. <laughs> because the, um, the false accusation is very, it's impossible for the the person's ego to tolerate. So see, Guru may also make a false accusation to, to test. Uh, is this the false ego gone or not yet? Uh, like rice in the pot. After cooking, you take it out and squeeze it, that's still hard. <laughs> so sometimes the, the Guru may test the disciple. Oh, is he right yet? No. So, Narad, there's really no fault in Vyas because this is a Leela. But Narad Muni is pointing out what he has done wrong. And Srila Vyasadev is so humble that in his magnum opus, in his greatest and final contribution to Vedic literature, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the first thing Srila Vyasadev has put there is all his own faults. <laughs> Can you do it? If you will write a book. So then the first chapter you write all the wrong things you've done in your life. <laughs> so just see Silam Yasadev's great humility. So Narad Muni began to say to Vyasadev, Jugupsitam Dharma Kritam Shashata Sobhava Raktasya Mahan Vyatikramaha Oh yes, what you have written? Jukupsitam Dharma. It is condemned. Condemned. Why did you write all about Karma Kanda and Gana Kanda? It is condemned. So Bhavaraktasya Mahan Vyatikrama, you have made a Mahan Vyatikrama a great transgression. Why? So Bhavaraktasya, because the common tea people they're very attached to their own conditioning, their own acquired the acquired nature that they have, the conditioning of their body and mind, they're very attached to that. So Yadvakato Dharma Iditarastito. If you tell someone, oh, here are the Vedas, and in the Vedas you can do this sacrifice, and by this you can get money, you can get children, you can go to heaven, you can enjoy in so many different ways. So then persons being very attached to their desires, they will follow this. And then, if another person, a real sadhu will come and say, stop all this karma kanda nonsense. You are a soul. Surrender to Krishna. Then, this person who is attached to his uh, own conditioning, he will say, no, 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 it's written here in the Vedas, Vyasadeva has said so. I'm following this. <laughs> so now, Mangyate Tashlam Nivarnam Jana, if someone will come and say, leave those things, then that those persons attached to their own conditioning, they, will, they won't respect them. They won't respect their opinion. 
and they'll quote you Vyasadeva. So Mahan Vyatikramaha, you have made a great transgression. Jugupsitam, this is condemned, condemned. Why did you speak about other things other than Krishna? You should have spoken only about Krishna. Why? Na yad vachas chitram padam hare yasho jagat pavitram pragrinita kai chit tadvaya samtitam ushanti manasa na yad trahangsa niramantra shikshaya. Those words that don't describe the glories of the Supreme Lord. Na yad vachas padam hare yasho. Jagat Pavitram, those words that describe the glories of Krishna, purify the entire universe. The words that glorify Krishna, purify the entire universe. But the words that don't describe Krishna, then, Tadvaya Samtirtham, that is like a pilgrimage place for crows. Hmm? You see, if there's a beautiful, clean, crystal clear, pristine lake, you see that swans go and swim on that lake. The crows don't go there. But if there's a filthy place where everyone throws the garbage, people spit, vomit, then all the crows think, Mahotsav ki jai. And all the black crows, they go to the filthy place and they're very, very happy that they take pleasure there. So that is called Tadvaya Samtirtha, the holy place and festival for crows. So what is the crow festival? Any words not about Krishna. All mundane talk, all talk about anything except for pure bhakti, pure Krishna and pure devotees. All other words, they are filth, disgusting. And persons who are attracted to them, they are like black crows. But the devotees, they are hangsas, they are like swans. And they only go to the nectar of Harikata. So try to be like a swan, don't be like a crow. I see many times people come, they listen to very sweet Harikata. And as soon as the kirtan is over, they go outside and then jump in the trash with the cross. By talking about mundane things with others. Polluting themselves and polluting others. And you can only do this so many times before Maya will smash you and take you away from the path of bhakti. It's a great offense. <laughs> so, now Rishi said to Vyasadev, you have written all this stuff about karma, kanda and everything. This is for crows. Hmm? So then Narada said, but the words which describe the glories of Krishna are a completely different mm -hmm. phenomena. What do they do? Janataga Viplavo. They make a revolution in the lives of the impious persons. Viplav mm -hmm. means capsize, like a boat. Capsize. <laughs> you were, that means sinful persons, they were wandering in their sinful life. But by the mercy of a Vaishnava, they heard some Harikata. And when they heard this Harikata, their life was turned upside down. Completely. They give up all their sinful activities. They give up all their worldly desires and ambitions. And, and now their heart is pointing towards Galoka Vrindavan. and they're eager to go there. So this is a revolution. So Narad Muni told Vyasadev, don't write about other things, only about Krishna. The other things are a crow festival and the pastimes of Krishna can even just totally make a revolution in the life of sinful people and turn them into pure devotees. So the sadhus, Srinvanti, Gayanti, Grananti, Sadhava, if there's a speaker present, they come and listen, Srinvanti, Gayanti. And if there's no speaker present, then they themselves, they sing. Grananti, Sadhava. And they accept into their heart 
the nectar of Harikata. So then, see, Narad Muni told Vyasadev, Tathangyata Kinchana Yadvi Vakshata Pritak Drisha Stat Krita Rupa Karma Bihi Na Kai Chit Kwapi Chadus Pitamati Labita Vata Hatam Nauri Vaspadam. Narad said, Whatever you describe, which is Pratagdasha, coming from a conception that there's something different from Krishna. Hmm? If a person has Pratagdasha, they don't see Krishna everywhere, then the words that come from them just makes Dushtitamati. Before we spoke about Stita Pragya how the consciousness should be fixed. But when there's the vibration of words, which are expressing a conception that there is any reality outside of Sikhashti, then those words, they simply make dushti tamati, make the consciousness oscillate, unstable mind, mood swings. And when that happens, then what? Then, you cannot enter into samadhi. You cannot even enter, do dharana. You cannot concentrate dharana. You cannot do meditation. You cannot do druvanusmriti, continuous meditation, and reach the stage of samadhi, wherein one enters into the pastimes of Krishna. But rather, that person. He's just like a boat on the water with no steering mechanism, just blown here and there. A boat just blown by the wind in any direction. You can imagine in the middle of the Pacific Ocean you have a boat. So you need to get to land. So you have to go in a particular direction. But the wind is just blowing all over the place. You can never reach your destination. So in the same way, as long as your mind is dushtitamati, is oscillating and disturbed, as long as there is the inability to concentrate, then you cannot make progress to the destination of life. To Goloka Vrindavan, you will just be floating here and there on the waves, of, on the wind of Prajapa. Mundane talk is like the wind and just blowing you here and there in the material world. No progress, no attainment of the destination of life. So in this way, Nadrishi very powerfully criticized everything except for Kirtan and Harikata. Yes, yes. Very important. So then Narad Rishi, he begins to specifically delineate the glory of Bhakti and the, the indignity of everything which isn't Bhakti, essentially. So what are those things? Karma, Jnana and Yoga. So in, re in relationship to karma, Nadrishi said, Chaktva so dharmam charnam bhujam hare bhajan paktota patetya do yadi yatra kwa va badram buddha mushikim kovat apto bhajatam so dharmataha. Hey Vyasadev, have you written that if a person leaves all karma, all responsibilities. Whatever responsibility a person thinks he has to his family, to society, his nation, to anything. If a person and he leaves that to serve Krishna's lotus feet. But as he was progressing in bhakti, he had problems. And he fell down. Hmm? So, you see, if you're doing karma and you do it wrong, you get no results. But Narayana says the person leaves all karma, does bhakti, he doesn't do it very well, and he falls down. But there's no loss for him. In the end, he will become successful one day. 
Woran ihr da hin? Ja, trat, kwa ba badra ma budu shpeshikim, kwa ba ta toba ta tam so darmata. If a person doesn't leave his karma and he does it all perfectly, absolutely perfectly, what benefit does he get? Nothing. Because if you do your karma perfectly, you go to heaven, which is like a brothel. You can enjoy with many karavashi and the apsara is there until your good karma runs out and then you're back where you started. And there's a chance you'll go down then to hell by committing sins later. You see? So, by doing karmas, there's no benefit whatsoever. So, Narad Rishi is explaining this very clearly to Vyasadev. You described about karma. If you do it perfectly, there's no results. And if you leave it and do bhakti, and it's com your bhakti is a complete disaster, but still there's no loss. And in the end, you'll be successful. <laughs> How is it glorifying bhakti? It's incredible. Because people think, oh, how can I give up this responsibility? How can I give up that responsibility? No, all inauspiciousness. Our only responsibility, our artha, is praying upon a shakta. How to attain love for Krishna? So, Mm, our Tosi Jasti has said, Chajo Pita Pralada Vibhishana Bando Parat Mahatari Guru Bali Chajo Kanta Prajapanita Bhaya Jagamangalakari Someone may say, I cannot give up my service to my father. But Chajo Pita Pralada, Pralada Maharaj did not serve his father, he only got shikura. Jaja Upita Pralada Bibishana. One may say, I have to serve my brother, Bibishana Bharta. Bibishan did not serve his brother, Rava. He was a number devotee. He gave up the service of his uh, brother, elder brother, though that he should not, from the worldly perspective, but he did. Jaja Upita Pralada Bibishana Bharta Bharat Mahatari. A son should serve his mother. But Bharat, he gave up the service of Kaikei. He said, I will never even call her mother for the rest of my life. So Bharat gave up Kaikei because Kaikei, by her uh, demands, asking for benediction, Lord Ram was banished to the forest. So Chajo Pita Pralada Vibhishana Bando Bharamahatari Guru Bali Chajo. One should not give up Guru. All the Shastra says, never, never give up Guru. Hmm? But Guru Bali Chajo, Bali Maharaj gave up his Guru, Shukra Acharya. Hmm? Shukra Acharya said, don't make any promises to this Vaman, this dwarf Brahman. It, it's Vishnu in disguise, he'll take everything from you. Don't give him anything. Hmm? Bali Maharaj said, if he's Vishnu, then he already owns everything. And I should offer everything to him, even myself. So Bali Maharaj rejected his guru even because his guru became unfavorable and against bhakti, against the path of pure bhakti. Kanta Banita, a woman should not give up the service of her husband. But Kanta Prajapanita, all the gopis, they all. Bhakti Sultan Vaya, Bratri they gave up all their husbands and family members. So Kanta Prajapanita, Vaya Jagamangala Kari. All these persons gave up all their duties and responsibilities to serve Krishna and it was not inauspicious, it was not problematic. It was auspicious for the whole universe. So Narad Muni said, why did you tell about karma and, and why did you tell about Gyan? So then Narad Rishi began to criticize the path of Gyan. What did he say? What did he say? You are the leaders and pundits here. Naiskaryam apyachuta bhava bhajitam na shobate gyanam alam niranjanam kutaha puna shashwada bhattamishray na charpitam karma yadapya karanam. 
Very important verse. See, two, in the first canto and at the end, in the twelfth, beginning and end. Upakram Upasanga. At the beginning and the end of the Bhagavata, you'll find this. So, it means, Naiskarami Mapichutta Bhava Vajita. If a person has become purified of all material contamination, Niranja, and they have Gyan, knowledge, which is nice karmia, completely free from any uh, fruitive intentions, na shobhate jnanam, their knowledge is not auspicious, it is not so beautiful. Why is their not, knowledge not beautiful? It is not beautiful if it is devoid of bhav, feelings of love for Achyutta Krishna. Achyutta. Krishna is Achyutta. He never fails. He never fails to completely smash your material life. So he is Achyutta. He never fails to make you cry forever. So his name is Achyutta. He never fails to save his devotee and give them the service of his lotus. So many meanings of a tutor. But if you don't have love for Krishna, then all your knowledge, even if it's uh, free from fruitive intentions, then it is not beautiful, it is not auspicious. So, Alam Niranjanam. That means enough with all of this purification. What was the point of becoming purified if in the end you didn't love Krishna? So if Gyan is not auspicious, then Kuta Puna Shashwada Badra Mishware na Chapatam Karma Yadapya Karnam. If knowledge of the Brahman and the state of liberation is not auspicious without love for Krishna, then what can we say about karmas in this world? Which are painful to perform in the beginning, the middle and the end. Just pain. That is sakam. If you're doing sakam karma, working to fulfill some desire. And even yadapya karanam, what if you do nishkam karma? If you if you're working without any attachment to the results, you get gyan from that. But if that is not offered to Krishna, that is also inauspicious. Na chapita karma, yadapya karanam. You're doing the karma apya karanam without any. Then, after Narad Rishi had criticized the path of karma. And then he criticized the path of Gyan. He also criticized the path of Yoga. Yama di bi yoga patai kama loba atomagu makunda sevaya yadvat tadat manam na shamyati. Oh, I'm putting it because it's on the subject. This was will come in the next chapter. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's on their phone trying to find the verse. Yama di bi yoga patai kama loba atomagu. It is true that by practicing Yamadibi, that means that yoga has eight stages beginning with Yam. Yam, they are the prohibitions. Then Niyam, the observances. There are uh, five prohibitions in yoga, then five observances. Yam, Niyam, then there is the Mm, asana, sitting postures, pranayama, breathing, pratyahara, withdrawing the senses, dharana, concentration, dhyan, meditation and samadhi, these are the eight uh, limbs of ashtanga yoga. So yomadi bi yoga patai kamalobhatoma hu. It's true that by practicing Astanga Yoga, you can become free from the disturbances of lust and greed. But, Mukunda Seva Yadvat Tadatmanam Na Shamiti. Unless and until you engage in the service of Mukunda Shri Krishna, you will not attain Shamya. Na Shamiti. The first uh, four angas of Ashtanga Yoga are called Hatha Yoga and then mechanical and physical. Mm -hmm. 
यम नियम आसना प्रत्याहारा यम नियम आसना प्राणयम एंड देन प्रत्याहारा कम्स द फिफ्थ वन द लास्ट थ्री दर्ना ध्यान एंड समाधि अकुल शम्यम इन द योग सूत्रस बिकॉज दे आर द प्रोसेस by which one enters first into some pragyata samadhi samadhi with an object and then asam pragyata samadhi samadhi without an object so this is called samyam and the yogis are aiming to attain this samyam dharan dhyan samadhi but nar muni is saying that you can get free from the gross disturbances of lust and greed but mukunda seva yadva tadma atma da na shamyati you will not attain samyam the perfection of samadhi without bhakti to krishna so patanjali said samadhi siddhi ishvara pranidana the perfection of samadhi comes from surrender to god jai sri sri hari govinda ji ki jai sri ram govari ki jai So in this way Narad Rishi has glorified bhakti and he has criticized all the other paths <coughs> Narad Rishi told Vyasadev Narad Rishi Narad Rishi Manye tadarshanam kalam you darshan your philosophy vedanta is not sufficient but my presentation the panchara that is only bhakti to krishna is successful so narad began to explain to vyasadev about how he attained success in this path of the panchara Narad Rishi said in my previous life I was a dasiputra the son of a shudra woman a maid and once during chaturmasya four months of chaturmasya starting from uh, well some people start from the ekadashi shaina ekadashi or to utan ekadashi and uh, we are following my gurudev Parm Gurudev Bhaktisthan Swatako from the Purnima to the uh, Purnima at the end of Kartik. This chapter was four months. So during that time, some sages came and stayed in the house where my mother was serving. Those sages, great sages, they were actually the four Kumaras. So at that time. I got the chance to uh, serve them. When it was time for prasadam, I would put out their plates. I would clean afterwards. And when they were sitting and talking together, harikatha, then I was listening. And by listening to their words, I experienced a great transformation. By hearing their words, I began to realize. the out of ignorance i was identifying and thinking this body was my stuff i asked them can i take your remnant and very mercifully they gave some of their remnant mahaprasad and when i tasted their remnant mahaprasad then suddenly a very strong ruchi a taste for harikatha appeared in my heart i was listening to them every day and relishing so much and when the four months came to an end they were about to leave then i was just a boy at the time and then become so attached to them when they were leaving i was crying so they said to me oh don't cry don't cry go and take bath in the river and come back so then i went into bath in the river and came and then they spoke mantra in my ear what mantra no oh namo bhagavate tu byam vasudevaya dimahi prajumnaya niruddhaya 
Namo Sankashanaya Cha. This mantra. They gave me this mantra and they taught me how to uh, meditate on the mantra and the regulations regarding it, the practice. And then they went. Srila Vyasadeva said, Oh Gurudev, what happened after they left? Nath Rishi said, next chapter of Srimadhyam. Then Nath Rishi said, after they went, I had no attachment at all to this world. But my mother was very attached to me. But one day she went for a walk and a snake came and bit her and she died. So now all my obstacles had been removed. And I left my home and I began wandering here and there through mountains and forests. And finally I came to a holy place, a pure place. I took bath there and sat, sat down and I began to remember the mantra given by my Gurudev. So, Nanad Rishi said, I gradually became absorbed in that mantra. And then mantra revealed himself. Iti murti abhidani na mantra murtim amurti kam yaja se yagya purusham sa samyag dashana apuman. Iti murti abhidani na there is a murti, beautiful surup of Sri Krishna. Hmm? Mantra murti kam. Mantra murtim amurti kam. And that mantra that they gave to me was actually a murti of Krishna. Mantra murtim amurti kam. And though this mantra itself, I realized that it has a beautiful form. But that murti is amurti. Here, that form of the mantra is amurti, that means not a material form. Or it can mean, the word murti also means katur, hard. So, the murti of the mantra, the form of Krishna, that manifest when I remembered my mantra, was amurtika, not hard, but very soft and sweet. Soft, sweet, fragrant, beautiful, shining, charming. So, yajate yaju purusham sa samyag darshana pumam. That person who worships the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, in his beautiful form, manifest from mantra, his darshan, his vision, his philosophy, is sa samyak darshana pumam, is samyak, complete. Hmm? Now, you can look at the various verses that are coming in order in Srimad Bhagavatam. First, Vyasati says, Snatasna nyunam. Alam Vichakshwa. Oh Gurudev, I feel Nuna, something insufficient, I'm lacking. And then Narada told him, Yes, Manye Tad Darshanam Kilam. I think that your darshan is Kila, insufficient. Something is lacking in it. But then when he spoke about his own experience, worshipping the Supreme Lord by the devotional process of the Pancharapta process with mantra. Then Narada Muni said, Sa, mm, sa mm, Samyag Darshana Puman, that person, his Darshan is not Kila. Insufficient, his Darshan is Samyag. Complete. It is a complete understanding. Why? Because Supreme Lord is pleased, he is satisfied by that. So Narada Rishi said, I saw the beautiful form of the Lord in my heart. And I was in so much ecstasy. My hands were standing on end. Tears were flowing from my eyes. And in Ananda, I fainted. And when I fainted, then the form of the Lord disappeared. So when I came back to external consciousness, I was crying and feeling a great shock, having lost the vision of Sri Krishna. And then, mercifully, Sri Krishna spoke to me. Just a voice 
in the Akash. He didn't see anything, just heard the voice. Krishna said, you will not see me again in this life. Those persons who are cool yogis, who are not fully purified, they cannot see me at all. That means that, yes, you are purified because you have seen me. But the general yogis, they cannot. Those who haven't become fully purified by bhakti. So then, he said, you should go on. You will not be overcome by illusion. You should go on remembering your mantra. And you will attain a spiritual body. And you will come to me. By following this path of bhakti, one becomes purified from all material desires. So Narada actually, in that life, at that point, he had no material desires, but the Supreme Lord said that to make him become humble. More humble. Now, he had attained praying. But his praying was not mature. And this is why the Supreme Lord appeared to him and then disappeared and said, you won't see me again in this life. Supreme Lord said to him, I have appeared and disappeared just to increase your eagerness. So now his praying due to separation would become very, very intense and he would quickly, his praying would become very mature. So then after that, Narada said, I wandered here and there from place to place, singing the glories of the Supreme Lord. And gradually, gradually, the time came, the last moment of my life. And just as sometimes in the sky, two flashes of lightning come at once, at the same time. So two things happened at once. Prayuja mane maitam shuddham bhagavatim tanum arabdha karma nirvano nyapatat pancha bhautikaha Simultaneously, two things happened. Arabdha karma nirvano my body in which the power of the karma had already been destroyed. Some persons translate in this way that the Prabhupada karma of my body was finished and at the same time I attained the spiritual body. But this is not the meaning. Why? Because then it would say, Arabdha karma nirvane. But it doesn't. It says, Arabdha karma nirvano. Nyapatat panchabhotika. You see, Parabdha Karma is destroyed in the stage of sadhana and he was already in prayer. So he did sadhana, he got bhav, and he got prayer. So there's no question of the last moment of his life, his Parabdha Karma being finished. So it doesn't mean at the time of the Parabdha Karma being finished, it means at the, that time he gave up his body in which the Parabdha Karma was already finished in the stage of sadhana. And because Rupa Goswami has said, Yad Brahma Sakshad Kriti Nistaya Pi Binashama Eti Bibang Nabogai Upeiti Namas Puranena Tate Prarabdha Karmeti Viroti Veda. If someone is meditating fully absorbed in Brahman, hmm, they can be liberated from their hmm, uh, coat, beach, and their Aparabdha Karma. But they cannot be freed from their Prarabdha Karma. The Karma which is mm, related to this body in this life. They cannot get free from it. But mm, they, will, they will have to in, uh, taste that Karma. Even if they are absorbed in Brahman. But Vinana Bogai Parabdha Karameti Viroti Veda all the Vedas are Viroti. Roti means shouting and Viroti means roaring! All the Vedas are roaring! 
You may be absorbed in Brahman, but you still have to undergo Prabhupada Karma. But as soon as the pure name appears on a person's tongue, not even Krishna, only Krishna. As soon as the pure name appears on a person's tongue, his Paramda Karma is finished there and then. So, Aravda Karma Nirvano, that body in which the Paramda Karma had already been finished before when he was chanting the pure name, he gave up that body and Shuddham Bhagavatim Tanum. He attained Prayujamane. His soul was united with a Shuddha, a pure transcendental body as an associate of the Supreme Lord. Now he had this beautiful transcendental body. And when the end of Brahma's day came, because Vyasadeva said, I know that you are the son of Brahma, but you just told me you are the son of this maidservant. So how can we reconcile these two things? Nad Rishi said, at the end of Brahma's day, then all the living beings enter into Brahma and Brahma enters into Narayan. And then when Narayan creates again, Brahma comes out and they said, then it, when it was time for Brahma to manifest the universe, I was manifest from the lap of Brahma. Hmm? Because the lap is the place of love. Hmm? So he came uh, from the lap of Brahma, in his, but in his eternal spiritual body is Narad, playing on his vena. So in this way, Nad Rishi explained to Srila Vyasadeva, Eitad datur chitanam matraspase chayamuhu plavo sindhu baba sindhu plavo krito Hari na hani varnanu varnanam hari chari anuvarnanam. Narayana said, "It is my personal experience that the living entities who are constantly suffering in this material world, because their senses are always thirsty and eager to touch the sense objects, they can all be freed from the, by the, continuously hearing and chanting and remembering the descriptions of the pastimes of Sri Krishna." Hmm? So Narada said, this is my experience, this vision is complete and perfect. So Narad said to Vyasadev, now Vyasadev, hmm? have you described the pastimes of Krishna? Have you described them? So Vyasadev said, well, that's something. Narada said, have you described? Gopi Bias to be told it that Bhagavan Balabat Kochit Udgayati Kochin Bhuktas Tadvaso Daruyantravat. How? The all pervading, all powerful, all knowing Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the source of all incarnations, from whom Nashinga Dev, Baraha Dev, Lord Ram, everyone has come. In Vrindavan, he is like a little baby. And the bridge passes are coming and saying, Oh, if, if you do a dance, I'll give you a ladu. And he's dancing, he becomes like a puppet in the Tadva so Daruyantravat. Have you written how that supreme controller is like a little baby and a puppet in the hands of the elderly gopis of Vrindavan? Dristva Parashvam Krishna Kripayasut Sabandane. Hey, Vyasadev, have you written how though Krishna the Supreme Lord gives multi liberation to everyone, but his mother, seeing that he'd been a naughty boy and smashed the pot of yogurt, took a rope and bound him and he could not get out? Have you written it? Vyasadev said, No, Gurudev, I have not written it. And Narad said, What have you written? <laughs> have you written? Have you written? That as Krishna grows older, he's playing with the coward boys. <laughs> and they're wrestling with each other. And Sri Dham wrestles Krishna to the ground. And holds him down and jumps up and says, I am the winner, I am the winner. 
But then Krishna jumps up and said, I am the winner, I am the winner. And all the boys are all Krishna. You have been defeated. Why are you saying you're the winner? He said, because my nose was up and his nose was facing down. Sri Dham said, no, you are bogus, I have won. He said, no, I have won. And I picked up some dust of Braj and threw it at Sri Dham. Then Sri Dham picked up some dust and before you know it, all the cowboys, they were throwing dust everywhere. There was a dust fight. In the distance, one powerful Rishi, Durvasa Rishi, you know, Durvasa is very stern, very, very stern. When people see him coming, I hope he didn't see me and try to escape, in case he will curse them. The Rasa Rishi was walking through the forest in Gokul and he saw the boys throwing dust on each other, play fighting. And the Rasa saw, there is Krishna. Parabrahma Vadanti Tattva Vedas Tattvam Yad Jnana Vadvayam The non-dual supreme absolute truth What is he doing? Throwing dust And his friends are throwing dust at him Playing So beautiful, so beautiful And the Rasarishi just sat down He was stunned seeing the beauty of Krishna So then Sri Dham said Oh Kanaya That Rishi he saw everything. He should decide who won, whether I won or whether you won. So then the two boys came marching over to the big Rishi with his long beard and jacket. Hmm? Krishna said, oh Baba, Baba tell him I am the winner. Sri Dham said, oh Baba, Baba tell him I am the winner. Hmm? Seeing the beauty of Krishna and his friends, tears of love were flowing from the eyes of the Rasa Rishi. He could not say he was the winner because his voice was gad gad choked with ecstasy. He could not speak. So then Krishna jumped in the lap of the Rasa Rishi this time. And Sri Dham jumped in the lap this time. Krishna grabbed him by the beard and pulled his beard. Hey Baba, tell him I am the winner. Sri Dham grabbed the other side of his beard and pulled. Oh Baba, tell him I am the winner. The Rasa was playing this one. I am the winner. I am the winner. I am the winner. They are pulling his beard. <laughs> Chris said, Baba, are you dumb? <laughs> she said, Baba, are you deaf? Don't you hear us? But he was just in the Samadhi on the beauty of Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so then the two boys got up. Oh, this Baba is useless. Let's go and play somewhere. <laughs> And then all the boys ran away to play in the forest. So Shukadev Goswami said, Itam satam brahma sukhana bhute dasyam gatanam paradarakena paradevatena maya svitanam naradarakena sadam vijaru kita punya punya. Shukadev Goswami said, In this way, those who worship Brahman, the rishis, they know that Krishna is the foundation. Brahman, oh he, patista, ham, amrita, svava, yasitya. Krishna is the foundation of Brahman. That's how they see Krishna. Mm -hmm. Dasyanam, the servants of those who have a mood of service to Krishna, they see him paradevatena as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Maya Sritanam Naradara Kena People are in Maya, they think, oh Krishna, maybe he's just some historical person or he's just a human being. Hmm? But Sadam Vijayu Kata Punya Punja None of these persons can realize the nectar of how see Krishna is playing with these boys in the forest of Vrindavan. These boys are Krita Punya Punja. They must have accumulated mountains and mountains of Punya. Piety. That they're his friends. They don't know he's God. He doesn't know that he's God. They're just sinking in the ocean of Madhurya Prem Seva to Krishna. Playing with him as equals. Yeah. So remembering the beauty of the coward boy's love for Krishna, Shukadev Goswami spoke these words after he heard them from Vyasadev. But at this point, Vyasadev hadn't written any such thing. So Narad Muni was describing these pastimes to Vyasadev. He said, oh Vyas, have you written this? 
Have you written? That Sri Krishna, with tears in his eyes, he's bowing down to Radhika and Brajagopis and telling him, Na pariyam niravatya samyujam swa sadhu katyam vibhudayusha piva ya ma bhajan durjya keya sankala samrishya tadva pratiyatu sadhu na. Oh my dear Gopis, even if I become your servant for millions of years of life of Lord Brahma, I am unable to repay you for even one of the loving services that you have rendered to me. You have given up all the shackles of household life and dharma which are very difficult to overcome. And just to please me, I cannot reciprocate you with you. So therefore, may you be compensated only by your own liberal, good, great qualities. Your sadhuta. You are really sadhus. You are really open-hearted. What is the reward for loving service? The love itself. There's no reward greater than having such love. So let your own wonderful qualities be your compensation because I am unable to reciprocate with you. Narad Rishi said, Vyasadev, have you written this? Vyasadev said, oh Gurudev, no I have not. So then Narad said, yes, you should write all of these things. <laughs> but I have not realized them. Narad Muni said, go into trance. Go into trance. So then, receiving this order from Narad, then Narad, he went away, and Vyasadev sat and began to meditate on that same mantra that Narad had told him. He went, began to meditate and Bhakti Yogi Namanasi Samyak Pranihita Malay Apasyam Purushat Purnam Mayam Chatad Pasrayam In his trance Vyasadev saw all the pastimes of Krishna from his birth how he was born in Gokul and at the same time he appeared as Vasudev Krishna in Mathura and how Vasudev Maharaj carried him across and that Vasudev Krishna entered in, merged with the Yashoda Nandan Krishna in Gokul. How Krishna was stealing butter and bound by his mother. How he killed Putana, Trinavarta, Shakatasur. How he danced on the head of Kaliya. How he lifted Giraj Govardhan. How he danced with the gopis in Rasalya. All the pastimes. How Akrura came and took Krishna to Mathura. And he, Krishna killed Kamsa Maharaj. Later all the Dwarka Lila. Everything was flowing spontaneously in the heart of Vyasadeva. And then Vyasadeva had what he realized in his Samadhi. He dictated to Ganesh. And it became Grantarad Shimabhagat. Grantarad Shimabhagatam ki. So Anarto Pasamam Sakshat Bhakti Yoga Madokshade Lokasya Janato Vidvans Chakra Saptata Sanghitam. Vyasadev realized that all the jivas are floating in Maya. But simply by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, they can be transferred from Maya to Galoka Vrindavan. So Srila Vyasadeva has manifested in this world the king of all scriptures, the Sri Krishna's Vanmai Murti, sound incarnation, Srimad Bhagavatam, full of Bhakti Rasa, which is the shelter of everyone. Krishna Tulya Bhagavata Vibhu Sarva Ashray. As Krishna is the shelter of all existence, Srimad Bhagavatam is the shelter of all existence. <laughs> Are you taking shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam? Then where will you find shelter? The two Bhagavatams. Shastra Bhagavat and Bhakta Bhagavat. We need the service and shelter of both. So, on this day, we are worshipping Srila Vyasadeva 
for his great contribution of manifesting the Krishna Bhakti Rasa Swarup, Sri Bhagavat Sarabhaveda Shastavaiti Paramahatva, the greatest of all Vedic literatures and our shelter, Srimad Bhagavatam. Simply by hearing this, Sajori Dyabarude Teyatak Tibi Susru Sabis Tachanat. If a person has become refined by the process of diksha under the guidance of their acharya, they become kriti. Then, as soon as they hear, the very moment they hear Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna appears in their heart and becomes bound by the ropes of prema and can never leave them. This is the Bhagavat So in this way, I offer my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of Srila Vyasadeva. And to all of our Guru Prampara who are Srila Vyasadev amongst us today, who come amongst us representing him and giving that same transcendental knowledge. There are many profound teachings in the life of Srila Vyasadev, but now we've run out of time. So those teachings, very profound teachings in what we have discussed this morning, we'll elaborate upon. In the evening, nature. <laughs>